In all ecosystems, and indeed in the biosphere at large, while matter is recycled from one form to another, energy flows linearly, starting for the most part from the sun and eventually emanating into space in the form of heat. Because the amount of sunlight that's actually making it to the Earth is fixed, it never really increases or decreases, and because energy is being lost at each trophic level in the form of heat, as you move from trophic level to trophic level, less and less organisms can be supported. Biologists refer to this concept as the 10% rule. It states that generally, only 10% of available energy makes it from one trophic level to the next trophic level, and then 10% to the next, and then 10% to the next. Shown here, you could say, let's say there's a field of producers that captures 10,000 kilocalories worth of sunlight by photosynthesis. They end up using, themselves, 90% of that energy. And when the grasshopper gets to eating them, it only gets 10% moving to the next level. So there's our 10% that the grasshopper received. 90% of it was used by the plants during their lifetimes in order to grow and reproduce and all of that. And then the pattern repeats itself to the next trophic level and to the next trophic level. So that by the time you get to the tertiary consumers, you only have 0.1% of the energy that was originally captured by the plants. 99.999% of the energy has been released in the form of heat by the time you get to that third trophic level. Because of this, ecologists use ecological pyramids to represent the trophic levels in an ecosystem, starting from the base where there are the most producers, um, where 100% of the energy um, is present, but then 90% being used, leaving only 10% for the next level, and so on, and so the trophic levels get smaller and smaller as you go because of this heat being released at each level. This can be represented a couple ways, for example, in a biomass pyramid, so if you had uh, one million kilograms of phytoplankton or algae floating in the sea uh, that are able to photosynthesize, that could only support a hundred thousand kilograms of zooplankton, those small animal organisms that are floating around grazing on the algae, which could in turn only support ten thousand kilograms worth of shrimp, uh, one thousand kilograms of large fish, and only one hundred kilograms of shark. You could do the same for a farm ecosystem and talk about the amount of grain that's required to feed a certain amount of chickens that's required to build a certain amount of our body. Or you could talk about it in terms of numbers of individuals. So a certain number of blades of grass would be required uh, to feed a whole bunch of herbivores to feed a smaller number of secondary consumers and an even smaller number of tertiary consumers. So to check your own understanding, Consider the first two of these thought questions. 90% of energy is lost at each trophic level. Where does that energy go? It can't disappear because of the law of conservation of energy, so where is it? Second question, how could these pyramids be used as an argument for being vegetarian? To answer the second, consider this energy pyramid. If a person were to have the option of eating a certain amount of cow, which we'll represent by this amount right here, and a certain amount of corn, let's say they're equal amounts, the person would get approximately the same number of calories from eating both of those meals. However, by eating the cows, that energy represents 10 times as much energy used up as does the corn. So in order to feed cows to make that much cow meat, you needed to actually feed the cows 10 times as much corn. So given the option, if you were to eat the corn directly, then you would have to eat 10 times less corn than if you took the corn, fed it to the cows, let the cows give off 90% of the energy just by living and growing and mooing and all of that other stuff that cows do, uh, then 90% of that energy would be lost and you would still get just the same amount of energy than if you just ate the corn in the first place.